Welcome back to Logic 101. I'm William Spaniel, and in this lecture we are going to do some very quick truth table practice. Last time we saw this algorithm on how to write a truth table, and we applied it to a very simple example. Now I want to apply it to a slightly more complicated problem, and the problem looks like this. We have a compound sentence that looks like that, not P or P and Q. And again, we might be curious when this statement is true and when this statement is false based off of when P and Q are true or false. And so we need to construct a truth table to figure that out. So again, truth tables just have four steps. The first step is to create a column for each simple sentence. So we see that this bigger expression has only two simple sentences, P and Q. And so we start off the truth table by writing P and Q, each in their own individual columns. The second step is to create another column for each additional, more complex expression in the order of complexity. So you'll notice here that on the left side of the disjunction, we have a not P, so we can write a not P as one of the columns. On the right side of the disjunction, we have P and Q. And so we want to go with that first because it's inside of those parentheses before we finish with the biggest statement possible, which is just the original statement, not P or P and Q. So that gives us five columns total. The third step is to fill in all possible truth values for the simple sentences. So we have P and Q, just two simple sentences, which means we have two to the second power total possible values of truth for each of those. So we have four rows in total. Top row is where they're both true, bottom row is where they're both false, and the middle rows are where one is true and when the other is false. And then we are now left with just our final step, which is to go from left to right in the columns using previous columns to deduce the truth value of the current columns. So let's go one by one. Let's start off with this third column where we have not P. So not P is simply the inverse of P. Wherever P is true, not P is false. And wherever P is false, not P is true. And so that's exactly what we see there. We just have the inverse of the first column there and the third column for not P. For the fourth column, we have P and Q. So we're going to be looking for where both P and Q are true, and we're going to mark that as true and the rest are false. So we see that the first row is where both P and Q are true. Every other row has at least one of those being false. So the top row is true for the fourth column, and the bottom three rows are all false. And then that allows us to unlock our final step, which is just looking at the truth value of that last column. So we have not P or P and Q. This is a disjoint. So we look for where at least one of those two are true. And because we are looking at not P as well as P and Q, that means we're looking at rows three and four. So we're looking at rows three and four to see where at least one of those is true. And when that is true, then we'll put a true in the fifth column. And when that's false, we'll put a false in the fifth column. And so that's exactly what we do here. So you'll notice in the top row, we have P and Q being true. So that fulfills the fifth column as being true because the right side of the disjoint is true. In the second row, both not P and P and Q are false, and so that means the disjoint is false. And in the bottom two rows, we see that not P is true, and so that fulfills the disjoint, and we have true for both of those columns, or both of those rows, rather. And that is a simple application of a truth table, and we will be looking into more applied stuff with truth tables in the next few lectures where we start talking about how we interpret conditionals and the exclusive or on a truth table. Join me then.